Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 28th of April. 6.4 magnitude earthquake strikes India's northeast in Assam damages buildings. US lawmakers fear dark future for Afghans as troops leave. And Sri Lanka cabinet approves proposed ban on burqas in public. And now for all the details. A powerful earthquake of magnitude 6.4 jolted India's Assam state and other parts of the northeast region on Wednesday morning. But there were no official reports of casualties. The quake hit at depth of 21 miles near the town, some 86 miles north of the main city of Guwahati. An earthquake of magnitude 6.4 struck India's northeastern state of Assam on Wednesday, causing cracks in the walls and floors of some structures. But there were no official reports of casualties. The quake hit at a depth of 21 miles near the town of Dhekia Juli, 86 miles north of the main city of Guwahati, the United States Geological Survey said. Assam Chief Minister Sarbananda Sonowal taking to Twitter asked citizens to remain alert. खबर तो काफी बिल्डिंग का आया है अभी तो देख रहे हैं अभी तो तीन बिल्डिंग तो हम लोग देख चुके हैं स्ट्रांग ट्रेमर्स आल्सो रिपीटेडली स्ट्रक अदर नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न एरियाज एंड द नेबरिंग माउंटेनियस रीजन ऑफ भूटान अर्लियर द यूरोपियन मेडिटेरेनियन सेस्मोलॉजिकल सेंटर हैड पुट द क्वेक्स मैग्नीट्यूड एट 6.2 इंडिया टचड अनदर ग्रिम माइलस्टोन एज़ द ओवरऑल डेथ्स इन द पेंडेमिक क्रॉस द 200000 मार्क एज़ शॉर्टेजेस ऑफ ऑक्सीजन Medical supplies and hospital staff compounded a record number of new infections. Over 360,000 new cases were reported in the last 24 hours in yet another single-day record. Meanwhile, the registration for the next phase of the COVID-19 vaccination drive for citizens above 18 years of age began on Wednesday. India's toll from the coronavirus surged past 200,000 on Wednesday, the country's deadliest day, as shortages of oxygen, medical supplies and hospital staff compounded a record number of new infections. The second wave of infections has seen at least 300,000 people test positive each day for the past week, overwhelming healthcare facilities and crematoriums and fueling an increasingly urgent international response. The last 24 hours brought 360,960 new cases for the world's largest single-day total, taking India's tally of infections to nearly 18 million. Hospitals in and around Indian capitals said oxygen remains scarce, despite commitments to step up supplies. अभी बहुत डर का माहौल है पूरे देश के अंदर और खासकर हम लोग दिल्ली के वासी हैं तो दिल्ली में मैं समझता हूं कि दिल्ली का हाल तो बहुत खराब है दिल्ली में सिलेंडर नहीं है सिलेंडर की अटैचमेंट नहीं है इंडियन प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी ऑन ट्यूसडे चेयर्ड अ हाई लेवल मीटिंग टू रिव्यू द कोविड-19 सिचुएशन इन द कंट्री एंड आस्क द ऑफिशियल्स टू एंश्योर रैपिड अपग्रेडेशन ऑफ हेल्थ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर Meanwhile, from Wednesday, India will allow all above 18 to register for vaccination starting from May 1. About 800 million are estimated to become eligible. Vaccinations in a national campaign begun in January have averaged about 2.8 million doses a day since an April 5 peak of 4.5 million, government data shows. In news from Pakistan, 
Pakistani troops have been deployed in 16 major cities to assist civilian authorities in enforcing measures meant to curb the spread of the coronavirus, including the wearing of masks in public and the closing of non-essential businesses after 6 p.m. local time. This came as the country recorded its highest daily death toll in recent days since the start of the pandemic. An official said the healthcare system was nearing its breaking point. Pakistani troops on Tuesday patrolled the streets of Lahore city as the military were deployed to assist civilian authorities in enforcing COVID-19 restrictions. Soldiers were sent to 16 major cities to make sure residents wore masks in public and shops and non-essential businesses were closed after 6 p.m. The army along with paramilitary officers and public forces drove through the streets to check compliance to the rules. Military spokesperson Major General Babar Iftikhar announced the deployment in a televised message on Monday. The same day, the country recorded its highest daily death toll in recent days. Since the start of the pandemic, an official said the healthcare system was nearing its breaking point. Law and order situation ki bunyadi zimadari civil idaron ki hai. Pakistan Army emergency responders ke taur par vaba ke phelao ko control karne ke liye digar kanun nafiz karne wale idaron ki bharpoor muavnat karegi. Pakistan has recorded 17,530 deaths and 810,231 cases so far and is in the midst of a third wave. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan on Tuesday indicated that the government might go for complete lockdown in coronavirus hit cities and stress the need for smooth supplies of food items during lockdown. U.S. Special Envoy Zalmay Khalilzad on Tuesday testified before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee on U.S. policy in Afghanistan where lawmakers question him about how Afghan women will be protected if Taliban takes control after American troops leave the country. U.S. lawmakers grilled President Joe Biden's envoy for Afghanistan on Tuesday about how the administration plans to ensure women's rights will be protected if the hardline Islamist Taliban takes control after U.S. troops withdraw later this year. Zalmay Khalilzad, Special Envoy for Afghanistan Reconciliation, testified to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee at the panel's first public hearing on the administration's Afghanistan policy since Biden announced plans to withdraw troops by September 11 after two decades of war. Members of Congress, many of whom are skeptical about the plans to bring home the 2,500 remaining troops, worry the U.S. departure would cede control to the Taliban, whose 1996-2001 to 2001 rule severely curtailed activities for Afghan women. We intend to maintain our embassy and will continue to provide development assistance, promote economic investment and advocate to preserve the gains for minorities and for women, including their meaningful participation in the ongoing negotiations and their appropriate representation throughout society. The international community has poured billions into Afghanistan's development since the Taliban was driven from power. Women have been underrepresented during peace talks, despite promises that they would have a place at the table. The September 11 deadline, which marks 20 years since the attacks on the United States that prompted Washington to go to war in Afghanistan, extended the U.S. presence there beyond a May 1 deadline negotiated under former President Donald Trump. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's cabinet has approved a proposed ban on full face covering worn by some Muslim women on national security grounds. The wearing of the burqa in the majority Buddhist nation was earlier temporarily banned in 2019 after the deadly Easter Sunday attacks. Sri Lanka's cabinet has approved a proposed ban on wearing full face wheels, including Muslim burqas in public, citing national security grounds, despite a United Nations expert's comment that it would violate international law. 
The cabinet approved the proposal by Public Security Minister Saradvira Sekre at its weekly meeting on Tuesday. The proposal will now be sent to the Attorney General's Department and must be approved by the Parliament to become the law. The proposal could be easily passed as the government holds a majority in the Parliament. Veera Sekre has called Burkhas, a garment that covers the body and face worn by some women, a sign of religious extremism and said a ban would improve national security. The wearing of Burkhas was temporarily banned in 2019 after Easter Sunday suicide bomb attacks killed more than 270 people. Two local Islamic extremist groups linked to the Islamic State were blamed for the attacks at six locations, three churches and three top hotels. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. The Bangladesh government has extended the ongoing nationwide lockdown till 5th of May amid surging COVID-19 cases in the country. As of Wednesday, Bangladesh reported over 751,650 infections and more than 11,220 deaths. The authorities had earlier imposed a lockdown on April 5 until April 28. As part of the restrictions, Shops and malls will remain open only from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Offices in both government and private sector are closed, but factories are allowed to operate. Movement of people is also restricted. As the holy month of Ramadan is ongoing, a maximum of 20 people can offer prayer at one time in the mosque. Public transport, including railways, buses, waterways and flights have been suspended. Meanwhile, Bangladesh government has also closed its borders with India from Monday till the next 14 days. However, trade through the borders will continue. Amid a spike in COVID-19 cases and acute shortage of medical oxygen across India, several humanitarian organizations and individuals associated with the Sikh community have come forward to arrange and provide free oxygen cylinders to those gasping for breath. Have a look. Amid the spike in COVID-19 cases and the subsequent shortage of medical oxygen across India, two Sikh youth organizations in Western Maharashtra state have launched a call center providing free oxygen cylinders to those in need. Members of the Malabar Hill Sevak Jatha and Mulan Sikh youth have collaborated with Red Crescent Society to help with the oxygen crisis in Mumbai city. Last time the corona was over, we had to go for 3 months. And this time we had to go for longer. Now we have a scarcity of oxygen that we don't get in the medical sector. We had to think about it. At the beginning, we were looking for where we got. On the death set recent Red Crescent Society of India. Meanwhile, amid the COVID-19 crisis, a Sikh temple in Kanpur has started an oxygen langar that is providing free oxygen to the patients with respiratory problems. The organizers said there are about 10 beds available with oxygen for COVID-19 patients at the langar, but they are trying to increase the number soon. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. 6.4 magnitude earthquake strikes India's northeast in Assam damages buildings. US lawmakers fear dark future for Afghans as troops leave. And Sri Lanka cabinet approves proposed ban on burqas in public. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.